This COVID-19 pandemic has really affected and disrupted the way that people are grieving. Grievers are being denied their normal human process of gathering together to celebrate a life and to comfort and console each other in their grief. I work with people who have been grieving someone before we were forced to self-isolate and they report to me how they are struggling even more, um, feeling more isolated and uh, lonelier because they feel like the world is so focused now on the pandemic and all the sanctions that have been applied that it's normal for them to feel that the world has uh, forgotten that they're grieving, has forgotten that they need support. And even importantly, they feel like the world has forgotten their loved one has died. They've also have been talking about some feelings of guilt around feeling this way when the world is so overwhelmed. So just know that if you are experiencing this, that it is actually quite normal. Another um, way that the pandemic has disrupted our grieving, for those who are dying, um, often people express that their fear of dying is based on the thought that they will die alone. And this is, has been happening for a lot of people. But on the other side of that is their family and friends aren't able to be at their bedside, aren't able to have those end of life chats and say their goodbyes. So this part is missing from people's ability to start saying goodbye and begin their griefing. Equally, what's been happening is because people aren't able to have their rituals and have their ceremonies, have their gatherings, their funeral services, or their celebrations of life, they are putting on hold saying goodbye and starting their, their grief journey. One of the most important things, again, as someone who's grieving, when you go to a gathering, you, we hug each other. And hugging each other is so important. Um, scientifically, what happens is when we hug each other, um, a hormone, the feel-good hormone, oxytocin, is, uh, is released. And this promotes feelings of love and well-being. You feel connected to that person. Um, and it can really be helpful when... Uh, for both the giver and the receiver um, to have that hug and feel um, that comfort for that moment. A lot of people I've been working with have um, talked about um, having to have a ceremony or a gathering later and what is happening I've noticed is people are dismissing those intense emotions that they're feeling right now because they know that they can deal with them later when they will have their supports around them. But it's really important for you to take the time now to sit in it and just acknowledge what you're thinking and what you're really feeling uh, instead of dismissing it. And also think about how you're expressing these feelings to other people. When people call you and they generally want to know, how are you today? And I know that it's just a standard social protocol for us to say, how are you today? People really do want to know how you're doing. So if you feel that you have a connection to the person who's asking, it's okay for you to say. Instead of just saying, I'm fine, how are you? You can just say, thank you for asking, today is a tough day. People may feel awkward, but it doesn't matter because um, it's just knowing that someone cared enough to ask the question and to listen to my answer is often enough comfort because words don't offer comfort all the time. So one last thing is being aware of how these feelings are affecting your day-to-day -day life. If we're constantly pushing away the sadness, the sadness is still there. So by acknowledging it, and saying goodbye to our people who we are, um, who we've lost and who we're missing. Um, we can do it individually and we can come together again as a group to support each other and say goodbye again then too.